Hello and welcome to this video on the top 5 worst statistical analysis mistakes. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical techniques including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter as well as courses that I teach for Quantfish. In this video I'm not going to talk about a specific statistical analysis technique but rather generally about mistakes that you could make when analyzing data with statistical techniques and so those are the top five worst statistical analysis mistakes that I could think of that I'm going to present here and of course this selection is subjective other people might find other mistakes worse and there sure are a lot of different types of mistakes that you can make but those are the ones that uh, came to my mind as some of the worst possible mistakes. So let's get started. The first one is forgetting to screen your data. So this is one thing that I see very, very frequently when I consult with people on their statistical analyses or I um, in other ways talk with people about their analyses. I often find that people neglect to screen their data carefully for very basic things such as typos, data entry errors, implausible values, extreme values, outliers, missing data, missing data patterns. So people really don't get to know their data well oftentimes before they run an analysis. They're all excited about running a statistical model and I can totally understand that it is exciting to analyze your data and you can't wait to find the results and find out whether your hypotheses can be confirmed of course however it is really important to first of all make sure that everything is okay with your data. Mistakes happen so easily when you enter data, typos happen, there could be extreme values for example a year of uh, an age in of 666 years of age rather than 66 if somebody typed 666 instead of 66 for entering a person's age and so then that could have a huge effect on correlation statistics for example and on other types of statistical analyses. So it's very important to screen the data, get to know the data, the peculiarities of the variables, their distributions, are there any outliers and so on. Are there any mistakes that need to be corrected? Are there, is there systematic missing data? And so a lot of basic things you should explore first with graphics. So that's a very good way to visualize your data, find out about your data, learn about data distributions, learn about bivariate distributions in terms of scatter plots, learn about extreme values, values that influence the results strongly and make sure they're valid and so on. So a lot of stuff can be checked and should be checked at the beginning before you run models or statistical methods such as structural equation models or simpler methods also regression analysis because those could be affected by problems with the data so that's a very very important step and I would take several days or at least several hours to very carefully examine a data set and each variable for different aspects and to learn my, learn about my data, to get to know the data, make sure everything is okay, make sure I know what the distributions of the variables look like, whether there are any outliers and so on. The second mistake that I find bad is deleting cases with missing data. This is also something that's very common and unfortunately it is kind of encouraged by a lot of statistical software which uses listwise deletion or pairwise deletion as the default method to handle missing data and it's a really really bad idea to do that in most cases because these types of missing data handling 
methods, deletion methods, assume the most restrictive missing data mechanism, which is missing completely at random data. And so if that doesn't hold true that those missings are completely at random, then you might introduce bias into your analysis. Also, listwise deletion, pairwise deletion means you lose power. When you delete cases, it means you throw information away, you reduce your sample size, so you might lose power. But more importantly, you might introduce bias into your statistical analysis with these methods. So a better way to do that is to use things like multiple imputation, full information, maximum likelihood estimation, both of which are now readily available in many programs. Multiple imputation can be done, for example, in SPSS. Full information, maximum likelihood estimation is available in many programs for structural equation modeling, which you could use to also run regression models and other models that are included in the general linear modeling framework. So that's another mistake is to improperly handle missing data, introducing bias, throwing data away that can lower your power and can lead to invalid results. So don't do that. I have videos on this channel in which I talk more specifically about what you should and should not do with missing data. So check those out as well. I have a playlist on missing data handling so you can learn more there. The third worst mistake is picking the wrong kind of statistical analysis that does not answer your research question. So often I see that people have a mismatch between what they actually want to test or find out and the st statistical analysis method that they're using. So what they're using does not allow them to address the question of interest. And of course, that becomes more and more complicated as you analyze more complex data. For example, longitudinal data where you want to find out about maybe mean differences across time versus stability in terms of covariance stability across time. There are many different types of models, not all of which would allow you to find something out about covariance stability because they may be focused on mean stability. And so that's just one example where you might have a mismatch between the statistical technique that you pick and your hypotheses or your research questions. And so make sure before you run something that you understand what you're doing and that the technique is able to answer and fully address your research questions. If you're in doubt, consult with a statistician or methodologist who is knowledgeable in the area and have them take a look over what you plan to do and so they get their approval, get their confirmation that the analysis type that you're picking is really the right one for your data, for your hypotheses, for what you want to find out. Fourth, excluding cases from your analysis that don't support your hypotheses is one of the worst things that you can do. And that is flat out extremely problematic. And some people still do it. Not everybody does it in an evil, with an evil intention, so to say. Some people just think that, oh, these, these cases look like they're not uh, okay, so they're not typical for what um, I'm looking at. So I'm going to delete them and then my, thing, my analysis looks better. And they may not even realize that this is a really, really terrible thing to do that can hugely bias your results and can extremely uh, can compromise your whole statistical testing and statistical analysis. You cannot do that. What you can do, of course, is exclude invalid cases. If you have clear evidence that a score isn't valid, that the score is an error, or that a person did not take a test or questionnaire seriously and has in produced invalid scores, and you have clear evidence that that's the case, then it may be okay, but you still have to report it. So you still have to let your readers know in a scientific paper that so many cases were excluded and for what reasons. So it's really, really important. And it cannot be a reason, cannot be that those were cases that didn't support your hypotheses, because then if you do that, that would totally compromise your ability to test those hypotheses if you excluded cases just on that basis. So that is something that you absolutely shouldn't do. And then lastly, that's also a really terrible one, is fishing for significance. 
this is something that also many people really aren't aware of that it is a bad thing and they don't do it so say to do something bad or with an evil intention they're just simply not aware that this is problematic what does it mean fishing for significance fishing for significance means that you are running many 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 statistical tests tests of statistical significance and you're picking the ones that give you significant results and you report those and you don't report all the other ones that turned out to be non-significant so you so they say oh yeah here's what we found and this is great and we're not going to talk about all the things that we didn't find and the reason why this is problematic is that you're capitalizing on chance there are so many tests that will be statistically significant simply due to chance when you conduct many tests of statistical significance because remember that by chance alone, so say 5% could show up as significant even though there is really no effect. And so that a probability that you will incorrectly reject the null hypothesis and falsely claim that an effect is statistically significant will increase when you run more tests so when you have when you try out multiple different dependent variables and you delete the ones that weren't significant or when you um, run multiple tests on multiple variables and just simply look at the ones that uh, turn out to be significant then that is fishing for significance and then that compromises your ability to test anything because what you found may not be relevant at all so you have to decide beforehand how many tests am i going to do and then only do those tests and then also make a proper adjustment for type 1 error inflation if necessary because sometimes it is necessary to run multiple tests of statistical significance for example to compare multiple group means when you have more than two groups you want to compare maybe all the groups and that's fine but you need to have a proper adjustment for type 1 error inflation and you also need to read us need to let your readers know and have full transparency about how many statistical tests you did conduct in total and it should all be based ideally on a priori hypotheses so you should before you look at the significance test you should specify how many tests you're going to do and then only do those with proper adjustment for potential type 1 error inflation if necessary so it's really important to be transparent to not just simply cherry pick the results that turn out to be significant and leave out other information I hope you found this video useful to learn more about statistical analysis mistakes. If you did, then please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, check out the description for additional resources. And also, if you can think of other terrible statistical mistakes that you've seen, then please let me know in the comments below what you have experienced and what you find to be the worst statistical mistake of all. And I'll see you next time.